What does pressure is a privilege mean? Oh, you really dive into this quick, eh? So casual, then you just stare me in the eye and ask the first question. <laughs> <laughs> pressure is a privilege is definitely something that like evolved over t- time. I think I first heard it from Tim Grover, which is someone who kind of like his book Relentless put my mindset into like the focus on my mindset and competing rather than just my physical body because I knew that's what it would take to like get to the next level. And I think after winning an Olympia, I was like, oh, fuck, like I just showed my cards. I, people know what I'm capable of. Now there's no one I got to beat. There's no like second place, third place, like flow. It's like, no, you're the best. And unless you're the best, we just forget about you. So it was like this pressure I felt on myself and it was coming externally for a while. And I was trying to like understand how I could gravitate that a little bit better without it kind of bringing me down and slowing down my progress. And I had to kind of function into the reality that the pressure was really coming from myself rather than externally. And that it's a good pressure. It's a pressure to be better and to become the best version of myself. And it's something that if I choose to use it properly, it's going to push me to be a better version of myself, to grow mentally, physically, in my relationships, however I want it to gr- let me grow, if I choose to take control of the aspects I have control over. So in essence, it's a, the more pressure you have on you, and if you take it as a privilege, it's a choice to put your perception as a privilege rather than a burden. And by taking the power back in that choice, it pushes you in a direction of being better rather than holding you back. Yeah, there's a pain that comes from the expectation of success, Mm -hmm. I suppose, which is different to your first time. You know, when you've got nothing to prove, you have nothing to lose. The underdog's always the funnest. Is that the way that you found it? I mean, I definitely, the beginning of my career was just, I never even had aspirations to be Mr. Olympia when I started. I just loved to train, loved to bodybuild. And then once I started to get that pressure on me, that started to fade a bit because I was taking in so much outside noise and I stopped doing it for the right reasons of why I started and just the fact that I love it and I enjoy and I enjoy pushing my body to the limits. So that affected me for a bit. But even like my first ever Olympia win, because of other stuff I had gone through, I actually didn't even really enjoy it because of like stress of my health and pressure. So I had gone through the year before all this, like not being present and suppressing all my like fears I had around it. I just like battled through it, got there and I was like, it's over. Like I just won Olympia. This is this goal I've been chasing like for six seven years specifically in the league i have it and now why why do i feel like i'm missing something and i think i kind of uncovered that i was suppressing all this pressure all this fear of my health all these other aspects and in doing so i was also suppressing my ability to fear joy feel joy and excitement and the, the positive side of things because you always hear you can't like selectively numb emotions you either pretty much numb everything or you feel all of it and i was definitely a numbing kind of guy i was like fuck it don't feel it push it aside compartmentalize and get to work and I was just like, okay, no, this isn't right. Something's got to change. And those two years, my came second the year before I got sick. Won that Olympian, didn't enjoy it. This is like, all right, physical stuff is down. I won. I got to focus on my mental side right now because I, well, if I'm doing this, I want to love it. I started because I love it and I want to keep doing it because I love it. I'll remember the uh, Conor McGregor was talking about, I think, the first time that he won the interim title. Mm-hmm. And then the second time that he beat Aldo in 13 seconds and before that fight, which seemed to be kind of peak McGregor, right? He was just this savant, like an artist of war. And uh, someone was asking him, what are you going to do differently this time that you didn't do last time? And he said, I'm going to enjoy it because he stepped out on stage and there's that famous photo of him and he stood like this, looking out at the weigh-in. Just feel it. And he said he can barely remember it. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. You know the photo I mean? He's stood there and he's got that tattoo up at the back of his... And he said, I can barely remember it. Mm-hmm. And he got another bite at the apple. Yeah. He got to do it again. That's, that's like, and I, it's a huge part of my life again, like getting sick. I felt like I was going to have to stop competing. And then I won that Olympia. And then I'm like, okay, now I have the opportunity to do this again, right? Like, that's an absolute blessing. Like, I'm so grateful that now I get to do it again. And I've done it four times and I'm going for a fifth. Like, the fact that I've had four years to like enjoy it more and, pre- and like perfect my craft, it's just like, it's something I'm like, counting my days that I'm grateful for every single morning. So it makes it more fun. 